our reading, we'll pick up at verse number 7. Hallelujah. As you were coming in, the different individuals were present to give you uh, a pink ribbon today. We want to uh, honor and uh, celebrate uh, this uh, Breast Cancer Month and uh, thankful for all the survivors. We, amen, we are grateful for all, all the survivors. Hallelujah. And we pray for families today who have lost loved ones uh, to, to breast cancer. Um, I, after service in, in the vestibule, if you want to give a donation uh, to the uh, Breast Cancer Fund, please see Sister Jackie Watson, Sister Barbara Daniels. Uh, if you'd like to give a, a contribution, we'll make sure uh, it gets into the necessary hands. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 7. Paul is just to give us brief content. He's just previously laid out for us uh, that <coughs> Satan, who is the uh, prince power of the air, has thought to try to, to blind the minds of individuals so that they can't see the glorious gospel, uh, which is uh, Jesus Christ. He's trying to shield and try to apprehend people from knowing the power um, that is in Jesus and also in the gospel. Verse number seven, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which li live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then, death worketh in us, but life in you. We have in the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise us up also by Jesus and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many uh, redound to the glory of God. Notice verse number seven. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. Verse 10. The latter part, the life of also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. In the latter part of verse 11. And the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. I want to talk uh, once again today from the, the thought breaking the barrier of limitations. Uh, and I want to focus uh, on release your potential. Release your potential. Let's pray. I'm grateful today for the love that you have uh, for us. Thank you for this day, this moment, this time. Thank you for the move of your spirit, uh, the, the weightiness of, of your presence that we feel here in the house. Now, I, I pray, Lord, today as your word goes forth, that it will impart the necessary values and principles in the lives of your people that we may forever be changed. I, I also pray that as it comes forth, let there be such clarity, Lord, that, that this becomes one of those pivotal moments that we know that today our life was indefinitely changed. Father, I thank you for what you're about to do. We give you praise now and for the rest of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, I want to talk to you from the, the thought breaking the barrier uh, of limitations. And I want to focus uh, primarily on release your potential. God's in intent for men and women has not changed. Nor has he taken away from us the strength or the beauty 
that he gave us uh, at birth, um, but actually predates uh, our birth at the time of creation. Gifts, talents, uh, potential is buried inside each of us. Just happens to be covered over by attitude, um, disappointment, discouragement. So we're unable to see uh, uh, the true value of who God actually made us to be able to be. Unfortunately, at times uh, we throw up no trespassing signs um, when God wants to start to work out something in us. And uh, um, we, he begins to demand uh, more of us. And as he starts to demand, then we uh, shrink back from what uh, he wants to do uh, in us. And um, then there's this point that just like uh, Peter, uh, some of us step out on, on the water uh, and try to walk uh, as he has given us command. And then we notice that our environment has changed. Uh, and when we notice that the environment is, it changes, then we start to drown uh, because God has called us out of something. We had enough faith to step out, but we didn't have enough faith to keep going with it. Uh, what I want to do today is uh, first and foremost explain the fact that about the treasure that's in the earthen vessels. And then I want to give you uh, seven elements that will help you to release your potential. So let's, let's uh, deal with this today. <clears throat> Paul refers to, uh, to the treasure in earthen vessels in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. He says that we have a treasure in these jars of clay. Considering uh, he is referencing the book of Genesis chapter 2, verse number 7, that the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. The Lord God formed or sculpted out. That word is yatzir, formed. And so he sculpts uh, as a, a crafter or, or uh, an uh, architect uh, or a, uh, as an, an artist would, would paint a mural. Uh, he would form in the ground. And based on Genesis chapter 1, verse number 26 and 27, what he sculpted out was an image of his own self. He sculpts out of the ground an image of his own self and then turns around and breathes into that, that formation that was made from the, the ground. That's the adoma, the, uh, the connotation would render its red clay. So God forms uh, out of red clay an image of himself and turns around and breathes now into that very same image. The word breath there is the ruach. It's the fire light of God. It also indicates his spirit or his essence. So God breathes in the red clay uh, and uh, his own breath, essence, spirit, or fire light, and that which he formed out and breathed into stood up and began to live. It was just a fascinating point all by itself to see clay walking around, living, breathing, and moving. Uh, and if you can see, brothers and sisters, when he formed Man, uh, out of clay, he formed uh, a mind from dirt, your heart uh, from dirt, your, your lungs, uh, kidneys, liver, uh, your, your bone structure, your entire skeletal system, nervous system. He formed it from clay and then breathes into that the breath of life. When he breathes his breath of life, uh, that word breath is, again, it's the Ruach's fire light of God. Uh, he breathes life into man, the life of the flesh and the blood. So when he breathes into man, he doesn't just breathe air, he breathes blood into man. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, when he breathes his blood into man, Adam, according to uh, Luke chapter 3, verse th number 38, Adam was the son of God. So when God breathes his breath into man, he breathes blood into man. If he breathes his blood into man, he breathes that which is divine into mankind. So Adam has, if you can receive this in your cognitive understanding, he has God's blood in his veins as he moves around on the earth. Uh, but the Lord says something to him as he is walking around with God's essence, God's blood 
inside of him. He puts him in the midst of the garden, shows him two trees. One's the tree of life, the other the tree of knowledge of good and evil. God says, pointing to the tree of knowledge of good and evil, the day you eat thereof, you shall surely die. So when Adam partakes of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, the only tree that was forbidden him in the garden, uh, as he begins to eat of this tree of knowledge of good and evil, the food of the tree begins to digest into his system, and by osmosis now, his blood becomes tainted. Brothers and sisters, he took the glory, the essence, the spirit of God, and by disobedience, he taints the essence of God. So Jesus, what we, what we call the immaculate conception, he takes and, and says in the book of Genesis, chapter number three, uh, the judgment upon the serpent was that the seed of the woman will bruise your head. Now, please note this. He does not say that the seed of the man will bruise the head of Adam. When we as individuals, when we procreate, uh, we, uh, all of us should have the blood type of our father. It is the first and the easiest way uh, when we are trying to determine the uh, father of a child, the easiest way is to look at the blood type. So if you're, you and your father didn't have the same blood type, there's something going on somewhere. But the judgment upon the serpent is that the seed of the woman will bruise the head of the serpent. What was he saying? He was declaring that there was going to come a seed that the woman would bear. Uh, but we understand that you can't have a, a woman by herself, cannot have a child without the sperm. And the sperm carries the blood. So Jesus, brothers and sisters, would have to come by divine blood. If you'll see this, he comes the same way that Adam was formed from the ground. And he has divine blood in his veins. When you received the spirit of the Lord, Romans 8 and 9 says that anybody who doesn't have the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. So when you received the spirit of Christ, something took place inside you. Hallelujah. He has and is and shall be changing your uh the atoms and your molecular structure. You are being changed, brothers and sisters, from mortal to immortality. You are being saved. You have been saved. You're being saved and shall be. He is, he has changed you. He is changing you and he shall change you. He is taking his essence once again his spirit, and he is uh, uh, reforming you to what you were supposed to be in the Garden of Eden. So now each of us, having received the spirit uh, of God, have a, a treasure inside these jars of clay. We have the, the essence of God inside a body that's always dying. Glory to God. We have the eternal spirit in a body that is going back to the dust that it came from. So Paul was trying to get the church at Corinth to understand. There's a treasure inside you that needs to be unearthed. There is a hidden treasure inside of you that must be mined for. You must bring to surface, brothers and sisters, that which Christ has placed inside of you. These jars of clay, these vessels uh, of pottery are, are weak, but we have the grandeur, the excellency, the glory of God. Uh, if you'll notice the continuance of the verse, he says that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. He's given us of his spirit so that the world will see that he lives inside of us and that what we do is not us, but it's him living through us. Hallelujah. So 
what he wants us to understand in, in, in the church at, 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 at Corinth and know that having excellency inside of you, your performance should be excellent because it's not you that's doing the work, it's him that's in you that working. So even when you would be cast down, and even when you would be in despair, and even when you would be persecuted, all hope is not lost because Christ lives inside of you. And that we don't go through things like other people go through things because you have the spirit of Christ living inside you. You don't succumb here, brothers and sisters. You don't succumb to the presence of life like other people succumb to the presence of life because Christ liveth in you. And you have inside of you a supernatural power while others would give up. You are sustained by the glory of God. Now it's just a matter of learning how to tap inside to what's inside of me. Uh, um, the words of a, of a preacher friend of mine is going to be the Lord. Um, keep ringing in my mind over and, more, over and over again. The more I learn about Christ, he always said almost every time he got up to preach, he says, we have uh, Christ inside of us, but we don't know what we have. And uh, occasionally, I was driving him to different places. He, he said to me, he said, Brother Lamar, you, you just don't know what's inside you. Uh, and I, I'd hear this, and I'm thinking, well, but I got the Holy Ghost, what do you mean? <laughs> I got the Spirit of Christ inside of me, what, what do you mean? But now, the, the more I live with him, the more I understand, I, I haven't even tapped into all the essence of what's inside me. I, I, I'm ashamed to say, but it, it's true. Uh, I, perhaps I fell into, uh, in my earlier years, the, 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 the idea of church as we normally do it, just coming, speaking in tongues, dancing around a little bit, and, and going back home, not knowing that I, I'm supposed to pull out of me his glory every day of my life and in every situation of my life. So he has, he has given me the excellency of, of his spirit. So how do I um, unleash the potential that God has in me? Because, brothers and sisters, there's more to God. Hear this. There's more to God than just your speaking with tongues. There's, there's more to God than just uh, coming to church and, and dancing around, calling what we say, having a good time. I should be able to perform excellency and show the difference that God lives in me wherever I go. So if I'm in school, I should be 10 times wiser than those who are there. If I have a, a business, there should be a line of demarcation that, that shows that my, the way I do business is different from everybody else because I have integrity in me. Hallelujah. And that wherever I, I, I go and how I, I carry myself is a reflection of the glory and the potential that I have inside me. So what I would like to do today it is present to you seven, seven keys, or seven elements to release the potential uh, inside of you. And, and, and I pray that you, you, you get this. Um, we labor for quite some time trying to, trying to work this out. And uh, it blessed me. So I hope it blesses you um, the way that it blessed me. Number one, you must know your source. You must know your source. Now, <clears throat> those of you, if you, you can... Use th this principle is not only good uh, in in church. This is good for uh, business. This is good for uh, leadership. This is good for your your family life. Uh, every aspect of your life. What, what I'm about to give you uh, is is good for that. Uh, number one, know your source. First and foremost, as believers, God is our source. No one, <clears throat> no manufacturer makes a a, a product uh, and not knowing what he ma the product is for. He, and, and, and the uh, uh, wonderful thing about that is when the manufacturer uh, makes the, the, the product, the product is a reflection of the, the individual who has made it. If we're going to become what Christ has called us to be, we've got to begin to understand what is the mindset of my creator. What has he designed me for? I've got to get to know uh, who he is and get, get, into, get into his mind and understand why did he create us for this world. Brothers and sisters, <clears throat> it's important if we're going to release our potential, I've got to be able to reconnect with God. I've got to bear 
his brand because when he formed me, he had something in mind. When he, when he sculpted me, there's an idea that he had about me when he sculpted me. When uh, an architect makes a, a building uh, or makes a house, uh, the concept of the architect is uh, each room is designed for a particular purpose. So if you're going to refurbish, please get this, if you're going to refurbish the house that the architect uh, has made, now we've got to understand what was the mindset of the architect when he made this house. The Apostle Paul, in the book of Acts chapter 9, when he uh, was on his way to Damascus and he ran into the Lord, the Bible says that Ananias prays for him, and there's something quite interesting uh, it says that something like scales fell from his eyes. Something like scales. Something that was hiding him from seeing his true maker. Something that was apprehending him from recognizing who God was. But when he begins to reconnect with God, then now he has a clearer vision and he's able to see and, and also to perform that which God had destined him to do. Something like scales up in his eyes, and now he uh, has reconnected with God. So you've got to know, know your source. This is the foundational key, is knowing uh, your source. Reconnect with God. Number two, you must understand uh, how you were designed to function. <clears throat> understand how you were designed to function. Well, the just shall live by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith and, and not by sight. I've got to understand uh, how he has designed me to function. And get this, I can only operate within the design function that he has created me for. Quit trying to be somebody else when God has not made you to be anybody else except for you. They can't take the pressure that you take. They can't go through the things that you go through because they weren't designed to be you. you got to understand how he designed you to be able to function. And so if you only, uh, if you're a multitasker, then you're not going to reach your optimum potential just doing only one thing. Uh, but if you're not a multitasker, quit, quit trying to perpetrate to others <laughs> that you can handle it when you know that you can. <clears throat> if you are a glass of water, quit trying to be an ocean and learn to be the best glass of water that God ever created. Because a glass of water, after all, is refreshing. And once it's poured out, it can receive more. But have you ever entered out of ocean before? I just want you to think a little bit. So you got to understand how he has designed you to function. Paul understands and he writes and tells us that we must, we must live by faith. That you're going to go through things in life, and, and he's learned it himself through all the, the things and the adverse situations that he had to go through and the, and the beatings uh, as well as also the times that, that he was starving and at the time they didn't even understand how he was going to get from one place to the next. He had to learn to live by faith. I cannot judge or, or uh, consider the, the situation that I'm in right now by my own eyes. I've got to first and foremost uh, be where he is. See life from God's perspective and then um, be willing to consistently walk in the area that he's designed for me. This is what I, I, I've understand, understood in life is that for, for most of us, uh, we'll hear a word like this and uh, for about two days, we'll walk it out. But because we don't see anything come from it, like, I know what is, what's the use in, in, in being kind to other people when all they do is keep being uh, nasty to me, but he tells me to uh, 
be kind and, and show brotherly love and to give to my enemy when he's hungry and give him when he's thirsty. And it's not, it just doesn't work for me. It works for everybody else, but it doesn't work for me. You, you've got to consistently live it out and consistently live in the presence of God. Let me give you this challenge. Um, what, we, what is today? The 16th? Yes, the 16th. Um, now, if, if those who, who dare to go with me, uh, let, let's just put God to the test for 90 days. 90 days, 90 days. Um, mark all, we're going to mark today, and 90 days from now, which should put us where? In January? January, and that's January 15th, I believe it is. Um, that's um, Martin Luther King's um, his, his actual birthday and uh, Levi's actual birthday. Uh, and so let, let's mark that out, and we're gonna, let, let's just see if for 90 days we can live all seven of these principles. Every single day. And, um, and help me out by, by getting a calendar. Okay? And mark each day as it goes by. And, and let's just see if in 90 days if God is true to his word. Can we do that? Okay, let's just see if in 90 days if God is actually true uh, to his word. So you've got to learn, learn to function um, beyond what I see. And, and know that he has created me for more than what I am right now. If you, brothers and sisters, until you start working to, to see what you could be, you'll never know the blessing of actually who you really are. Until you actually start working on what God has designed you to be, you'll never know your full potential. So understand that he has designed me and he has designed you to function but the area that you're functioning in right now is large, is, is smaller than what you really are. Number three, you must know your purpose. <clears throat> know your purpose. You are the express image of God. You are his designed imprint. You are sent here to the earth to dominate in the earth. He has placed you here for mastery. He has put you here to bear fruit. And he has placed you here to be able to reproduce yourself. Glory to God. Did you get that last point? He has placed you here to reproduce yourself. Who are you and what are you pouring yourself into that after you leave your legacy will still live on? What are you leaving behind? that all will understand and know the design purpose of which God formed you for. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, there is an individual purpose that God has for you, but there is a corporate purpose for why you're here. And until we start functioning at the potential that God has designed us for, we will fail to be able to impact the world we were supposed to. Paul understood this fact, as well as also Peter. And uh, Paul, knowing it, knows that he's called to preach the gospel to the Gentiles. And being called to preach the gospel to the Gentiles, if you'll watch his life in the book of Acts, you'll see something, that he starts off going to those who are Jewish first, trying to preach to them. And uh, as he keeps trying to preach to those who are Jewish, he keeps running into opposition. Every time he keeps trying to go to, to the synagogue, he keeps running to, to opposition. But when God called him, his calling was to go and to be a light unto the Gentiles. So when he switched his focus from trying to, to minister to the, to the Jews and start ministering to the, to the Gentiles, uh, an entire new ministry opens up for him. Because he was called to minister to the Gentiles, and that was his performed purpose. Please see, brothers and sisters. These chairs that we have here are designed to hold uh, humans to sit on. They're not designed to stand on. <clears throat> They're really not even designed for your purse or your Bible. Okay. They're not designed for bottles of water. That's how we get spots on them. You hearing me? They're designed to sit on. So if we sat on them and didn't 
put so many things on them, we'd have less spots on them. Are you getting it? Because it's the, the design purpose is for sitting. They're not designed for us to stack a few chairs and to go change the light bulb either. That's what ladders are for. They are designed for sitting. So whenever, please get this, anytime we begin to use something against its design purpose, it is abuse. Are you getting it? So anytime you use your body different from the purpose that God has designed you for, then you are abusing your body. Your body wasn't designed for drugs. Are you hearing me? Your body wasn't designed for wild living. Your body wasn't designed for stress. Do you get that? So anytime we start using our body for a purpose that God has not designed it for, we are abusing the body. But watch this. Are not we going to give an account for all the deeds that we did in this Whether it's good or evil, so God is going to judge us and see, did you live out your purpose or did you abuse your, your design? So you got to know your purpose. Every manufacturer who forms or creates any product, he designs it for uh, a purpose, to, to function. And uh, as uh, that manufacturer designs it uh, for that de design purpose, uh, until, please get this, uh, until we understand the reason for its design and until we understand uh, all that the working is into that, we will never be able to use its maximum potential. So I give you the little manual that comes with your cell phone. Um, and the, the manual is designed to be able to tell you the things about the phone. I'm not going to ask you today. How many of you actually read the manual and see what's in your, your phone? There are few and far between. You know, there, are, there are a few who actually go through and, they, and they'll read through it, and, and others will just open it up, uh, and the manual's still in, in that sleeve of plastic. And we're just trying to operate, and, and then we'll say, well, how does this work? And we'll, we'll keep playing around with it, trying to figure out how it works, but that's what the manual is for. You have a manual that is either on your lap, beside you, in your hand if you have a phone, uh, and it's God's word, but how often do you, do you consult with your manual to find out what is my design purpose? So you got to read your manual to figure out why am I here and how am I supposed to be able to function? So number four. You must understand your resources. God has given you the resource of spirit, body, soul, time, and material. And until we start to understand why time is here, we will waste time. Until we understand why God designed time, we will abuse the time that's given unto us. Brothers and sisters, all of us have a window of time in which we are to rendezvous in this earth. What's interesting to me, Sister Jackie called me the other day, and she was um, you know, asking me a question about you know, whether God will take someone, you know, um, as we would call it, ahead of time. And uh, sometimes we feel a sense of loss because we'll say, you know, that this person uh, died too soon. God, God gives us all a window of time. We may feel that Jesus died too soon at, at 33 and a half years. But if you listen to what he says at, at the end of his life, he said, all that I came into this earth, I have accomplished. Which means that in 33 years, he was able to complete all of his assignments. So he had no other further reason to be in the earth because he had completed all of his assignments. You came here wired with assignments to perform. 
brothers and sisters, that there is a life call for your, your life. There is a, a life assignment. There is a life purpose for why you're here. And we must begin to understand, again, back to number three, what is your purpose? And when we understand purpose, then we can understand our resources. He's given me time to be able to fulfill the purposes that I have. He's given me a body to be able to fulfill the purposes that he's designed me for. So I've got to understand and properly use my time, properly use my, my body, properly use my mind. My mind is my resource to be able to fulfill the design purpose for which I came. My body is a resource that God has given me. Well, all of, all of you going to school, who are in school right now, um, at this appropriate time, you are making an investment into your life that your employer will pay you back for. You are being educated today. And you're, you're sacrificing time and energy uh, and even finances to educate yourself in a certain career or path of life. And if you'll, if you'll do it well, please get this. Uh, one of our problems uh, in school is that we learn enough information to pass the test, but we don't understand it. We just learn enough to pass. But when you understand your material. You're not trying to force yourself to pass a test. When you understand the material, then when the test is placed before you, you will always excel. But if you're only trying to gain knowledge to get out of the class, to get enough to pass so you can be average, then you'll never be able to accomplish your design purpose. But what will set you apart from everybody else if you will understand the information? When you understand the information, then now when you're placed in the situation to perform it, you're able to excel. Please get this. How in the world can you be Christian and be average? What do you mean? You have the excellency of the spirit of Christ. How can you be average when you have the excellency inside you? You have the most noble king in the entire earth, the uh, knower of anything that is knowable inside you. How dare we fail when the thinker of all thoughts is your source. Hallelujah to God. So if you will learn to tap into Jesus, the same Holy Ghost, brothers and sisters, that helps you get through trouble is the same Holy Ghost that will explain uh, trigonometry and statistics and biochemistry German and Russian and whatever else you're learning in school. It's the same Holy Ghost. You've got to just uh, call on your teacher. Lord, I came to class today, but my teacher is not able to explain to me according to how I learn. But you formed me to learn in a certain way. So since you know how I learn, will you explain it to me the way I learn best? Are you hearing me? And then sit down with the teacher of teachers. You'll see this. These, uh, they're writing books, forming lessons and sciences on the creation that God formed. And you're depending on your teacher to explain something that God formed when you have God inside you. Just cut out the middleman. Oh, you'll get that later. Yeah. And go straight to the source. You formed this, Lord, so since you formed it, can you explain it to me? The Bible tells us he gave the Holy Ghost to teach you all things. And then John the Bible says, because you have the Holy Ghost, then you have all knowledge. So if, I, if he teaches me all things that I have all knowledge, then there's nothing I can't learn. You can understand um, my source. And let me say this, and I'll go to the next point. With every vision, God has given you provision to fulfill the vision. Simply put, God will never give you an idea 
that he didn't have all the components for the idea to come into place. You just got to give God something to work with. As long as the idea is in your head, it will ne never manifest itself into reality. You've got to provide, take the resource that God has given you, begin to write out the vision so it will come into fruition. Let me give you number five. Number five is you must identify your core values. Identify your core values. God created you with ability to prioritize. And the things that we prioritize are the things that, are, that we value or the things that we put first. Brothers and sisters, first things must be first. But what are the first things in your life? He's giving you the ability to prioritize. So since he's giving you the ability to, to prioritize, and whatever we prioritize are the things that we value, what are you putting first? First things are those that we, which mean first in rank, first in order, first in, in time, first in value. My Bible says this, Matthew 6, 33, 34. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all the other things will be added unto you. Keep reading. Don't stop there. And he says, take therefore no thought for your life, for tomorrow has enough problems on its own. <laughs> he says, so you, you're trying to worry about how I'm going to make it tomorrow, and you're bypassing the God who made today, yesterday, and tomorrow. So put him first and quit worrying about tomorrow for your father knows what you have need of even before you ask it. That's what scripture says. So put, put him first. So you want to ask yourself what really matters in life? What, what gives you the energy to get up out the bed every day? <laughs> for a value is something that is desirable. It's something that's prized. It is something that, that is esteemed. Now, let me explain to you the difference between value and need. And the best way to explain that is the difference between fast food and a gourmet meal. Fast food will meet the immediate need of your hunger. The immediate need of, of, of your hunger. But a, a gourmet meal is something that, it, that should be savored. Something that should be <coughs> appreciated. You see what I'm saying? And, and, and I feel that perhaps uh, when it comes to life, uh, we're just looking for our, the needs. And we're not understanding that our, our God supplies all of our needs according to his riches in, in glory. So we're, we're so frantically running around trying to find, uh, get our needs met that we're forgetting and ignoring the value that is in God. Let me give you uh, some help real quickly on how to be able to discover your deepest values. Okay. First, what you want to do is write a list of at least 10 to 20 values, things that you um, hold high in your life, family, faith, um, finances, health helping other people out, whatever it may be, just write a list of at least 10 or 20 of those things. And then um, take that list of 10 to 20 and, and then whittle them down to about four or five. I'll give you my number one. My number one uh, core value is faith. Faith gets me up out of the bed every morning. And every morning, I renew my faith every day. Every, every morning I get up, uh, I am... Um, thanking God for life and asking him to save me one more time. And every morning I get up, I'm recommitting my life to him, telling him, uh, you know, Father, I, uh, I give myself to you today. Uh, all of that I have uh, is yours, as if this is the first time I ever gave my life to Christ. Renewing my, my, my faith with him. Uh, another value of mine is, is family. So I try to contact 
say something nice to my family every day because I don't know how long I'm going to have them here. I don't know the, the window of time that God has given me, so the time that I have, let me say something nice to them, uh, it, whether it's through text message or whether it's through uh, telephone. If you have loved ones in your life, brothers and sisters, you want to let them know every day I love you. And it should, it should flow, if you love them, it should flow freely. They shouldn't just think that you love them or even know, as we would say, well, I, just, well, I know it. You, you know I love you, don't you? Yeah, let them hear it. Let me, uh, I figured that was going to be a tough one. It's all good. And then uh, lastly, with those four or five that you have, then write out an expression as to why, how you're living out that value or how you're not living out that value and what you can do to actually live it out. If you value your family, but you're not contacting your family every day, then you want to write out, you know, here's what I'm going to do to actually change that. So in our 90 days, hallelujah, we should have restored relationships in our family if, if family is one of your values. Within these 90 days that we have, if your uh, faith is one of your core values and God is one of your four values, we should have some strong Christians coming in these 90 days. When... When growth stops, decay begins. Uh, <clears throat> if you have a phone, will you put that on Facebook? Yeah, just just yeah, send a message out to somebody. Tell them when growth stops, decay begins. <clears throat> Renewal is essential both for preserving your life and realizing your dreams. So if you have outgrown where you are, instead of throwing in the towel and trying to live a completely different life, redefine yourself. Did you get that? Let me say it again. If you have outgrown where you are, instead of throwing in the towel and trying to live a different life, learn to redefine yourself. Dig deeper and find out what else is inside of me. Yeah, that's a good one, too. Uh, number six. Number six. We got two more. Uh, are you all getting this? Is this, making, is this helping you? Number six. Uh, you must have the right environment. Have the right environment. God has created you to live and have relationships and fellowships. But not every relationship is conducive to the purpose and the potential that God has placed inside you. Brothers and sisters, not everybody that you have in your life is destined to go with you into your design purpose. Some people are there are as agitators, and you've got to understand and identify them as agitators. Now, I believe, hear this, I believe that everybody is essential and everybody's important, but we got to uh, understand why they're there. Some people are there in my life to teach me how to pray. Amen. Some of them are, uh, and you got to understand something about agitation. Agitation creates uh, cleanliness. Oh, God. Agitation creates creates cleanliness. So when you when you start, you can't clean your car without agitation. You, you can't wash your body without agitation. You cannot uh, clean your clothes without agitation. You can't you can't clean your teeth without agitation. So there are some people that are designing your life to be agitators. They get on your nerves so that you can become clean before God. So rather than mad, then thank you so much for getting on my nerves. You have taught me how to trust God, how to pray, how to stay in his face. Yeah. Hallelujah. You got to have the right in, the environment to be able to, to, to grow in. Uh, and, and one of the best ways, brothers and sisters, um, if we're going to reach our, our, our maximum potential, you, you got to find people who are either ahead of you on the road that you want to go to or who have that, that same common purpose that you have but that are willing to run the race with you. <clears throat> Hallelujah. 
some people, you just got to learn how to outrun them. Right? You just got to learn how to, how to pick up some speed because as, as long as they're running beside you, they're going to keep talking down. So you got to learn how to, how to pick up some speed and, and, and outrun them until, until that, that noise and the negativity starts to deafen in your ears. May I make a confession? I'll make it. <laughs> I have um, a problem, uh, a serious problem, uh, with ignorance. I do. Uh, I, I just, it, it, uh, ignorance really bothers. It really bothers me. Uh, I try, you know, to to smile and, and keep going, you know, but you know, oh, it just gnaws at me. And I, I'm sure not by myself, but I'm sure there's a few of you that it, it, ignorance, it, it really it gets to. So I have, I have this little issue <coughs> with ignorance. And uh, sometimes when people call me the foolishness, uh, and, uh, and just uh, with, with foolishness, and, and all they want to do is complain, I, I, I have this tendency to take the phone from my ear. Confession is good for the soul. Um, <clears throat> I have a tendency to take the phone from my ear. And you may, you're saying, well, why do you do that? Because I, I don't want their seed to be deposited into my mind. So as long as they're fussing and complaining, I'm like, I don't want to hear this. And I've, I've learned this skill, you know, <laughs> in listening. Uh, if you listen long enough to people, you can kind of tell where they're going. So they'll keep going. I'm like, And I'm listening for the for the exit. <laughs> You'll get it later. <clears throat> I'm listening for the, the time where I can say, oh, okay, thank you now. You gotta be able to see brothers and sisters, grow in the right environment and, and guard your mind from people that are trying to kill the seed of your dream. That are trying to kill the seed of the potential that God has in your life. You want to ask yourself, with what God has given you, can God? Is there anything too hard for God? Can this vision act to get launched off the ground? If God gave it to you, God is not in the business of teasing you. So if God gives you a vision, he has the power to get that vision up off the ground. What he's just looking for is somebody who will believe him and who will protect the vision God has given. I'm not going to be able to finish, so let me just give you the last one. Uh, oh, let me give you this one too. Uh, another point with this. Obedience protects performance. Disobedience diminish, diminishes potential. Obedience protects performance. Disobedience diminishes potential. Lastly, you must work out your potential. Work is God's blessing to challenge you to expose your potential. Hmm. Dreams without work accomplish nothing. God has given you work to bring out that which is inside you. But the sad thing is, is too many of us shy away from, from work or we look at work from the wrong perspective. We're just working in order to get a paycheck. Brothers and sisters, can I tell you this? The cattle on a thousand hills belong to God. Your working is not for a paycheck. If you're looking at work uh, only to gain a, a, a paycheck, you'll never be able to understand that your maximum, uh, optimum potential that God has for you. And you'll also miss your design purpose. God has given you work in order to create abundance in your life and also satisfaction. He has given you work so that you can re un un unleash the real you. Glory to God. Brothers and sisters, <clears throat> the love of work is the secret of personal progression, productivity, and fulfillment. Work encourages the release of potential, and potential is the abundance of talents, abilities, and capabilities. Work is God's tool for productivity 
and fruitfulness. Watch what it says. Genesis 1, 28. God placed man in the garden and said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it and have dominion. Where in the world does that say? Sit on the couch, do nothing, and get paid. Where did that say that you won't have to um, put forth any effort for potential to come out? He never said that. He gave us um, a task to do and then gave us work to fulfill the task at hand. Work is God's gift to help you discover your true potential. And he will place demands on you so that you can learn to work out what's inside you. So, in essence, God works the vision in. You've got to learn to work the vision out. So, if your the vision is to become a, a medical doctor, you've got to apply the effort and the time and use your resources to focus on that which God has called you to do. If he wired it into you, then you've got to learn how to hook up with him and begin to exert the energy so it comes forth. True, brothers and sisters, no great preacher has become great without effort. For those of you who want to preach, you've got to understand public speaking. You've got to understand what the Word of God says. And even after, even after understanding the text, You've got to be able to communicate the word of God to the people that are in front of you. If you're called to be an accountant, I believe God calls people for certain tasks. If he calls you to be an accountant, understand the laws of accounting. Uh, understand uh, what assets are. Understand how we move them. Understand what, what is liquidable, what's non-liquidable. We've got to understand those concepts if, in fact, we are going to become what God wants us to. We gotta learn to master the craft, the gift, and the talent that God has. It's more than just doing it, it's mastering it. As long as I'm doing it, I'm working for it. All right? As long as I'm doing it, I'm, I'm, I'm working for it. But when I master it, it works for me. And it fulfills the plans that God has for my life. Watch this too. When you are able to operate at optimum potential, not only does it bless you, it blesses the people that are around you. All these dreams we, got, we have in this room, all this power, let me just, I'll just use that phrase, all the power of the Holy Ghost that's inside this room. We have enough potential in this room to turn the United States upside down. Yeah. There's enough, enough power in this room to, uh, to affect generations to come if you'll release the potential that's inside you. I want to pray for you today because I believe this, and as I mentioned last week, that God is, is giving us second chances. And so I felt it necessary today to put some tools in your hand so you know how to work your second chance. What I want to pray for today is um, that, that passion, the fire, um, the drive, the motivation to actually bring the past. You're going to be challenged. And those of you who are going to take this 90-day challenge with me, you're going to be challenged within these 90 days. Discouragement, frustration is going to try to set in. <clears throat> but as it tries to set in, you've got to remember, what is my focus? What are my focus directives? Why am I here? Why am I doing this? For what purpose has the, he uh, designed me for? And then actually begin to live out those things every day, even when you don't want to do it, Keep on living it. Keep on doing it. 
and know that I'm not doing this by my own uh, inclination. I'm doing this by faith. I'm walking according to what God has. Come on, let's stand. We want to pray together. Thank you, Father. We lift those hands to Jesus. You're calling us upward, Lord. You're calling us higher. I pray today, Lord, that we will move up in you. I pray today that we will ascend to the place that you're calling us to be. I pray, Father, today that we as your children, that we will unearth the potential, the power, the treasure that's inside the earthen vessel. I pray today, God, that we will discover the true glory of what you designed us for. Now I pray in the name of Jesus that every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, by the power of the Holy Ghost, will arise to the place that you designed for them. I command now in Jesus' name for them to come forth by the power of God. I command that dream that's been dead to rise up. I command that, that goal that's been dead to rise up by the power and the authority of Jesus. I command every negative thought, action, anything that would try to stifle the power of God inside every believer, Command now that it will cease by the authority of Almighty God. May we begin to learn and exercise all that you created us to do and all that you, cre you created us to be. I thank you now. Bless you always in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're here and you want God to do something in, in, in your life, you want God to, to bring about a, a change for you.